It was about eight months ago that I tweeted I was working on an Atomus Ninja 5 review. Now, I didn't tell everyone that I was gonna wait eight months till we're all in quarantine so I could actually catch up and film this thing. But thankfully, over that time, it did provide me the opportunity to shoot with it a little bit more and get a really good understanding of what this monitor is great at, what it's not so good at, and some of the best use cases. So if you're in the market for looking for a monitor slash recorder and maybe thinking, why would you want something like that? In this video, I basically want to take you through some of my best uses for not only mirrorless cameras, but also cinema ENG type cameras as well. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with all the latest videos. But for the moment, this is the Atoms Ninja 5 and this is Q Time. So let's start with mirrorless because mirrorless kind of makes the most sense for a monitor like this. Uh, I think five inches is the perfect form factor for a monitor for a mirrorless camera. It's a big step up from usually what's on the back of those Sony A7s, Panasonic GH5, uh, Fujifilm X-T3, which is currently what I shoot on. So I think this is the right size. I used to have a seven inch monitor and I paired it with my Sony A7S and that just like, it was really big, bulky and heavy. Um, I don't think it usually makes a lot of sense unless of course you need that really big screen or you generally do a lot of studio work. So the first big benefit to going for any monitor, and this monitor does it as well, it gives you all the necessary functions to be able to expose your image properly, to be able to see things like waveforms, false colors, focus peaking, zebras. Um, you can apply LUTs to the final image as well so you can see what it's gonna look like with certain looks applied. And most importantly as well, if you're shooting log on some of these mirrorless cameras, they don't give you the option to monitor in Rec. 709. So a lot of times you're exposing based on your past experience uh, working with the log profile. And that can be good and bad, right? You generally do it by feel, but you can, if you're new to working in log especially, it can be really tough sometimes to judge exposure off a really flat image on the back of your camera. So I really love the Atomus monitor for its smaller size and for its monitoring features. But at the same time, that's really not unique to this particular monitor. There are others out there. There are others that cost less. The really big deal with the Atomus Ninja 5 is the fact that it has a SATA port on the back to put a hard drive onto this and basically capture media off your camera. Um, either in addition to the media that's already in your camera, like the SD card, or you can just record it separately and just record it straight to this monitor. It used to be the case, and five years ago when I bought my first Atomus Ninja Assassin, which was the big seven inch version of this, it was the case that you bought something like a Sony A7S, it could record 1080p internally, but it couldn't do 4K unless you had an external monitor, something like this. Thankfully, these days, a lot of cameras can capture 4K internally, and unless you're talking about things like the Nikon Z6, which can record ProRes RAW out of HDMI, which is like, basically giving the camera raw capabilities with an external recorder. Not a lot of other cameras will give you such a big jump in image quality going to something like a monitor recorder like the Atoms Ninja 5. The Fujifilm X-T3, which is the camera that I shoot on, uh, ha already has a 10-bit 420 codec internally on the camera and plugging it into an external monitor like this gives you 10-bit 422. So you're getting a little bit higher color sampling rate. Um, that could be important, obviously, depending on the application you're actually using the camera for. But I would say for most people, if I said to them, yeah, you get a little bit of a higher color sampling rate, they're probably not gonna see the tangible benefits in buying a monitor recorder just for that purpose. What I get a lot of use out of with this particular monitor is the fact that most new cameras, most new mirrorless cameras, are gonna be shooting on a codec known as H.265, which is the replacement to H.264. It's a pretty good codec. It's much more efficient than its uh, predecessor. Um, it also allows cameras like the XC3 to capture 10-bit 420 internally, but it's also a lot more intensive on computers. So a lot of newer computers are gonna have hardware acceleration from the processor or from separate chips inside of the computer. But generally speaking, not all of us are gonna have the latest and greatest laptop or uh, desktop computer. In which case, you might find that when you import those H.265 files, they're really intensive. And that's what I found when I imported my Fujifilm X-T3's 4K files into my iMac 27 inch from 2017. So it's not super old. It was a decked out computer with the fastest processor, about 40 gigabytes of RAM. So it definitely wasn't a slouch, but in Premiere Pro, I was really struggling to play back the files from that Fujifilm X-T3. So what's really great about this monitor recorder is it allows you to record to either ProRes or DNX HD 
which are more professional codecs, which generally speaking are gonna give you much bigger file sizes, which is why on these you know, on these monitors, you probably wanna add something like a 512 gigabyte or a terabyte hard drive. You're not talking about 64 gigabyte SD cards here, but it then gives you the option to put those into your computer and your computer has to work a lot less hard to be able to decode them and to be able to play them back. The other benefit that Atomos usually advertises is the fact that this then allows you to record past your camera's internal recording limits. So most mirrorless cameras are sold with a 29 minute recording limit just because of the fact that if they go over that, um, they're then sold as video cameras. I think it's in the EU is, is particularly where that law applies, but then the cameras all over the world have the same restrictions. So basically with this monitor, if you're plugging in your mirrorless camera to it, uh, you can just keep recording for as long as you want until the hard drive runs out or the battery runs out on your camera. So that's the second really big benefit. But what I've also found is when you're shooting something, let's say for example, it might be a bit, bit of a longer event, your camera battery, generally speaking on mirrorless cameras, batteries are not super great. Um, the Fujifilm X-T3 3's battery probably lasts half an hour to 40 minutes recording 4K. Um, so it does really struggle and you need to have a lot of batteries on standby. So using something like an Atomos Ninja recorder allows you to actually obviously take the feed out of the Fujifilm X-T3, start recording from the monitor, which basically then takes the pressure off the camera, it doesn't have to do all the processing work, and therefore translates to better battery life. Now this of course isn't without its downsides, it does create a little bit more risk because something could go wrong. Obviously the HDMI cable could fail, the mirrorless camera could stuff up in some way and maybe not send the feed properly. So I would only recommend doing this if you're nearby to the camera and you can monitor it. But otherwise I've been able to get just over an hour out of a battery on my Fujifilm X-T3, which is a significant improvement. So how about Cine sort of more ENG style cameras? Well, currently I'm shooting on the Canon C200, which I really love and think is an excellent camera, but it's not without its downsides. Um, when you're shooting MP4, it's shooting to 8-bit 420, which you're thinking to yourself, hold on, didn't you just say your Fujifilm X-T3 can do 10-bit 420 internally? Yeah, bring it up with Canon. I'm not gonna make this video about my gripes with the C200 and the fact that Canon have limited the MP4 part of it, um, whereas you can record 12-bit RAW on the camera. So obviously it's not to do with the actual um, processing power of the camera itself. But some of the really big benefits to using it with something like a C200 is recently or end of last year, I had a job where I was shooting green screen. Now, in an ideal world, you'd have a camera that shoots 10-bit to MP4s because that will give you a higher bit depth on the files and therefore gives you more color information, which makes it, I guess, a lot easier to pull a clean key from. But we weren't able to do that due to budget constraints. So using a monitor like this allowed me to get an 8-bit 422 feed out of the camera rather than 8-bit 420. So slightly higher color sampling rate. Again, just leading to being able to get a much cleaner key from the actual footage. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not gonna say that that is are gonna to apply to every single cinema camera, but definitely check what your camera can do internally and then what it can do externally and just compare and see obviously if there are certain cases, especially when doing more visual effects, green screen type work, where having a higher bit depth or color sampling rate are gonna help out in terms of getting a, a, you know, a better result at the end of it. And the reason I bring that up is because as I said, there are gonna be certain cases where having a monitor recorder like this are actually gonna help you out in that respect. Um, even when using more professional cameras, and even when you do have a cine style camera like a C200, you're still not gonna have certain features like false colors or uh, all the aspect ratio guides built into the camera. So therefore, a monitor recorder like the Atomos is still gonna come in handy in that respect. Although, if you're just interested in the monitoring features, it's probably unnecessary to spend the extra cash and go for something like this. The Atomos Shinobi is the version of this same monitor without the hard drive, hard drive port, so you can basically still monitor your image with all the same features, but you just don't have the ability to record it. So lastly, to wrap this up, I would say this has been an absolutely really great monitor recorder for me. And thankfully I found a lot of use out of it. Again, it really depends on your current situation and whether you think this is gonna be worth it for you. But overall, I'd say the main downside that I found to it is it can get a little bit loud, especially if you're running it for a little bit of time and recording 4K, it's, it's gonna actually heat up a little bit and the fans will kick up. So in, in tighter environments, kind of like this room I'm filming at the moment, you might start to hear that in the audio. As well as the fact that the starting price to the monitor is not gonna be the end price either. You're gonna to need to invest in an SSD for the actual monitor, uh, and Sony MPF style batteries, which I recommend the 970s, they're gonna last a couple of hours compared to the smaller ones. And then lastly, of course, your HDMI 
um, cable, which when I initially bought this, I thought, yeah, I've got heaps of HDMI cables, I don't need to worry about it. Um, but it turns out you need a pretty robust HDMI cable to do 4K 60 frames a second. And the only one I found that worked uh, for me was the, the Adamus ones basically, so I ended up buying them in the end. Although now a year on, there might be some better ones out on the market that can do the same thing. So if all that sounds appealing to you, make sure to check out the Adamus Ninja 5. Hit me up if you have any questions in the comments section down below. Uh, and of course, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.